Thank you for joining us. I'm Naiba Reynoso. Ahead, the magical waterfalls of Cascade Park and a trip back in time to experience what dinosaurs look like and how they lived. But first, a former foster youth and her baby have been living out of her car as she struggles to get her life stabilized. For young people like her aging out of the system, finding affordable housing can be a challenge in today's high-priced market. But thanks to a voucher program and support system, we were there on move-in day as she opened the door to her new apartment and new life. Before I started living in my car, I was a foster youth. Um, I, was in a fo I was in a foster uh, program. I aged out at the age of 21, so just previously in February, my birthday date. I was working with a young, a nice woman uh, named Therese, and you know, she helped me through my case. She helped me locate a place, and she's like, Hey, I, I found you something. I know you're living out your car. She was like, I understand your situation. I got a place for you. You're going to get out that car today. It's going to be the day you find something. I'm like, Okay. I tell my young girls, even my young guys, don't be another statistic. Do not allow the system to be make you another statistic in life that you would be a failure. Let's give our young adults an opportunity to grow, you know, in getting an apartment, you know, allowing them to live, succeed, gain educational goals, gain employment so they can be successful. It hurts me to see this because I didn't have to live in a car, but I lost everything. Uh, it was hard, but I know what it is to struggle. And maybe uh, this helped me, and I'm in religion also, that God had blessed me, and I feel like I should bless someone else also. These are the girls, these are basically the people that are young and going to grow into their profession. And as they grow into their profession, they're going to they're going to advance their generations. And with doing that, they're advancing LA County. They're the future of LA County, really. Their their story is just a stepping stone right now for what's really going to happen for them later on in life. A festival for entrepreneurs and small businesses drew residents to sample the goods and meet the local proprietors supporting the region's economic recovery. Take a look. Today, everybody here is welcomed at the East LA Civic Center. And today we are having our first kickoff for El Gran uh, Festival. And we're bringing together entrepreneurs, about 112. Small businesses are an engine of our economy. They not only are good for us and our neighborhoods, but they help create jobs, they help hire local folks. Um, you know, after a pandemic that hit us so hard and hit our small business community even harder, it's important for us to show that we're back. We're trying to show the community that they can eat like fresh things and not just things brought from miles away. The LEAF Accelerator and Fellowship Program, we run an accelerator for women of color, entrepreneurs of color. Uh, primarily focusing in South LA and East LA. We partner up with the uh, Supervisor Solis to actually canvas 10 corridors in unincorporated East LA. We figured it would be a good idea to bring all these elements together and have just a big, a big event that could bring all these vendors together so they could learn about each other's uh, businesses, help each other, support the local area, but also talk about opportunities to expand. Bringing resources to the community rather than making business owners and other community members going places, that's really what the key is, right? We can't emphasize that enough. Uh, businesses don't have the bandwidth to go places, to go reach for help, but if you come to them, that's really the new model. Congratulations on the first annual Gran Festival 
The county is here to support entrepreneurs and small businesses. We don't want folks to feel like they have to go at it alone. They should uh, check us out. We have an office of small businesses that's here to help you from start to finish to growth, whatever you need. So connect with us at opportunity.lacounty.gov. The dinosaur epic came roaring back to life at the Dino Fest, a big draw at the Natural History Museum. Here's more. So today, the Natural History Museum is celebrating Dino Fest. This is our seventh annual festival for dinosaurs, and we're also celebrating paleontology in general. We will have members from our research and collections out with displays from vertebrate paleontology, from our Dinosaur Institute, invertebrate paleontology, and over from the La Brea Tar Pits. Uh, lots of partner organizations with their collections here. Um, and we will also have the, our dinosaur hall open for people to get to to view uh, Thomas the T-Rex and our highlight dinosaur this year, which is the Carnotaurus. So you don't want to miss that. I like the T-Rexes. So it has two fingers, has really short arms, is really big carnivore, and it eats meat. In addition to all of this, there is hands-on activities for kids to be able to do. They can make dinosaur masks. They can color our Carnotaurus uh, coloring sheets. Uh, we have the Jurassic Park motor pool. Uh, joining us here today with their wonderful vehicles inspired uh, from those uh, that movie series. Hello, hello supply base. Hello, are you there? Uh, actually, I uh, built uh, JP number 66. We're actually part of the Jurassic Park Mortar Pool. We're the California division, so we're just a bunch of fans that love Jurassic Park. So we basically <laughs> built the Jeeps to what the movie was and we go out and we share them with the public. We have a Allosaurus and a Velociraptor out on display in the exhibition so that, those are definitely something you want to see um, and in addition to that just a lot um, a lot of other um, wonderful things to be able to see and do um, at this festival. Thanks for joining us. We leave you now with scenes from the fascinating Cascade Park in Monterey Park. We'll see you next time on LA County Close Up.